kid I worked with said, a day it opened for my band on three weeks notice and I probably never would have started a band if it wasn't for that challenge, you know, and just kind of for a laugh and to win a bet. Got a ton of our friends to come just because they all came to laugh at us, you know, like, what is this? And did it once and then it kind of became, hey, we're playing again and they said, we'll come by and laugh at you again. And a few months later, we played our first crowd that didn't know us and it, yeah, it went over pretty good and the rest is history, you know. <laughs> charity work we do with the Gavin Foundation which has been around since uh, the 60s helping people with you know getting over alcoholism and substance abuse and stuff. And we're gonna just stop in here and give them a check help them do their work. There you go. Thank you. That's perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> so yeah. these, these guys we, we, we give them some of our fundraise but in, in turn they do way more for us than the money we give them because uh, sadly there's a lot of profit to be made off of this epidemic right now so it's nice to see people doing it from the heart so Thank there you go big guy. Thank you. <laughs> Hurry down the bank. Whether it's sending someone away for treatment, whether it's prevention stuff, whether it's uh, rewarding kids that are working hard that go to the sober high school and giving them scholarships. The boys side at uh, the Cushing House and we had a little uh, debate on who had the cleanest room. Um, it looks pretty clean to me. This is the room that was selected as the cleanest room and he has a dropkick Murphy's hat right on. The top player in the room. These kids are learning, you know, everything from how to stay sober and, you know, go back to high school and, and also, you know, the little stuff like make your bed, man. And these were, they all picked, they each picked their favorite step of the 12 steps. Um, and then their interpretation in the end. I think we always had this like kind of social consciousness, whether it was our upbringing, our family, and it's pretty easy for us to grab an acoustic guitar and go down and in some ways it's like that's become the real job and the, and the band is just part of what, you know, fuels that, you know, that's like where, that's where the inside gets filled up doing that work. Ah, how you doing? We're ready to come on forward? Oh, sure. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. My own pr private nun. She's uh, like a guiding angel uh, for me, Sister Mary Adele. And, uh, happy you're here. She does great work. Jake, Jake how you doing, buddy? Good, Good to see you. you. Boston's a great place to live and grow up, tight-knit community, and lucky to have a lot of friends and family here, obviously. It's will be my home to the day I die, for the most part. <laughs> you know, we love it, and to be able to give back in the community is... Uh, it's an honor and a privilege, and you know we keep busy with the, the band, the charity work. But um, balance is kind of hard to find. I'm someone who would never, I would go crazy if I was bored. So you take on all these things, and there's always plenty to do. And it's how I like life, just to challenge myself and to be busy, and uh, have a good strong cup of coffee and go get them. <laughs> busy with the, the band, the charity work. Is it that's not enough? I've subjected myself to being a restaurant tool. So we uh, we're in the Dorchester neighborhood of Boston. That's the city line right there. Me and my partner opened up this place, Lower Mills Tavern, and then a taqueria at the corner. So very lucky to have a partner that knows what he's doing in the restaurant business. On camera, in front of him, I'm gonna talk like, you know, like I run everything. Just to piss him off, I'm gonna like really lay out an extra. You know, Brian, hey, keeps it going while I'm out of town, but really it would fall apart without me, you know? Which is, I say that in a joking way, because thank God I have a kid I grew up with that runs them, you know? Um, my job is pretty easy. I, you know, do more like the promotional side and finding the locations and handling on the licensing with the city and everything. And then um, once the doors open, I just uh, shake hands and kiss babies. So it's great. So here we are at Lula Mills Tavern. It's kind of late afternoon between lunch and dinner. Here's uh, my favorite employee, Emily. This is, I was just telling them how I probably what, do about 50 hours a week there, maybe 60. 
Like, uh, you know, by the time you close, I'm here awake closing. I would definitely right. say you're here about 72, 72 hours. 72 hours? Yeah, yeah. alright. See, I got our trail. Look that. He wants to try to run. This is my partner, Brian. He spends a lot of time walking up and down these uh, places. Uh, Brian um, runs the places while I'm gone. I probably put in about, I don't know, oh, 55, 60 hours a week. Brian, Brian just comes in and has a you're, couple of drinks and watch, watches over your inspiration. I was always a huge fight fan and, um, you know, very into the sport. And then a friend of mine, Danny O'Connor, he was a 2008 U.S. Olympian. He was training with his coach in Texas, but yet he was supposed to sell tickets and promote himself for his fights. And I'm going, man, this kid was in the Olympics and he has to hustle like this and train. I said, I I'm going to help him. And next thing you know, I'm promoting his fights. And then if you're doing all that work for one person, you kind of can do it for other people simultaneously. Next thing I know, I have 15 or so guys signed to Murphy's Boxing. That was the you know, company we started to kind of parallel the band. Uh, we're here backstage uh, at the fights, Melrose Memorial Hall. Uh, the legend himself, Mickey Ward, um, an inspiration to me as a person and to all these fighters out here that are coming up. Uh, you know, needs no introduction in the ring, but much like some of the other athletes from around here that have been so kind of, you know, great in the charity world, like the Bobby or Mickey, is the same thing. He has his own foundation. He walks the walk, uh, you know, a humble guy, quiet, but he's always doing stuff for other people. That's why I like to be around guys like this. And uh, when those fighters see him ringside, <laughs> they go those last 10 seconds like that. Uh, Bobby Orr, who was, you know, my idol growing up and who I've been fortunate enough to be able to call a friend over the years through meeting him through charity stuff, he, he said, you have this, like, passionate fan base, but you don't really engage their help. Do, you're doing all this stuff for others. Why don't, you, why don't you do something that you can call your own and get, get them behind it? Started the Clatter Fund, and it really, like... Man, it was almost like it gave the fan base a purpose too. It was like they were listening to the music, but they wanted to do more. And so we do these events, or if we do a charity t-shirt, like the amount we sell is like mind boggling. And it, it's a lot like with the mug. In addition, this thing is cool. Thank you, Deathwish. Proceeds go to the Collider Fund, raise some money with charity, have an awesome coffee mug. I think you can put beer in it too if you want. You like you have here a Deathless coffee? I'm gonna hook you like coffee? Sure. Oh, it's going to stop. Oh, yeah. like I guess, it. baby. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, don't come at me with that trendy, like, oh, it's a nice coffee house just because you got some bullshit on the walls. I want to fucking taste the bean and it better make me fucking. You know what I mean? I don't want to just. Fucking, you know what I mean. That's why I love Deathwish. They're, they're about it for the right reasons, not about fucking bullshit, fucking barista shit. You know what I mean? We're sincere about our love for what we do and the people that come to see us. And we get to go and play music where, like, you just have to be enthusiastic, put your heart and soul into writing the songs, and you go out there and you attack the stage, and they sense that, which drives us, and it's the best job in the, in the world. Yeah.